Good afternoon and welcome to my presentation of my research proposal for my PhD work at UVic. Um, I should just give a bit of background to say that uh, this was actually presented to my committee by myself just about a year ago, August 2015, and um, it is based on my candidacy exam papers, which uh, involved the writing of two papers over a period of a month. And my methodological paper was a uh, comparison and discussion between a Joanna Briggs Institute systematic review and institutional ethnography. And my substantive paper explored inter- and intraprofessional discourses and their significance for the introduction of healthcare aids and unlicensed um, care workers in acute care. And so that just gives you a little bit of background of where I'm coming from in terms of this research proposal. So this is a methodologically plural exploration of student, nurse, and educator experiences of intraprofessional collaboration. Several experiences uh, have intersected over time that have res resulted in the creation of this proposal. My own experiences with chafing while teaching practical nurse students and in graduate school have stimulated the development of my problematic, which roots this proposal. This chafing occurred for me as I struggled with various notions of nursing realities and trying to reconcile these while also noting my situatedness as a baccalaureate prepared RN who, as a new grad, also worked alongside two- and three-year diploma RNs as well as nurses' aides. This chafing continues to raise questions for me, such as how RN and LPN similarities and differences are currently negotiated and enacted in various contexts, including educational and regulatory contexts. Is there communication between RN and LPN groups? Why or why not? How do nursing instructors view or teach RN and LPN roles and scopes of practice? The literature reveals various perspectives on how nursing is understood in terms of professions and disciplines. As well, the literature and our research work reveals confusion and ambiguity over RN and LPN roles and scopes of practice. As well, there is little research available on changing care models and how these care models impact patient care, nursing work, and nursing education. These complexities, gaps, and ambiguities have thus been the foundation upon which I now have my current overarching research question. What is currently known about how intraprofessional relationships are developed in nursing students, and how might pre-licensure discourses and texts organize nurses learning to work on intraprofessional teams? The overarching research question is proposed to be supported by two sub-questions, each representing a particular phenomenon to be explored by a certain mode of inquiry or methodology. The first question is what are the experiences of health professional students and educators learning to work in intraprofessional teams? And the second question, what are registered nurses and licensed practical nurses' experiences of pre-licensure nursing education? And how might educational discourses and texts organize their work on interprofessional teams? And just a quick note regarding my understanding of a mode of inquiry or methodology. Uh, this is as I see it, and this has been informed by authors such as Richard Crotty, Tooley, that there is an interrelationship between uh, understandings around knowledge, so the epistemology, theoretical perspectives, methodology, and method, and they each support each other within a web of knowledge. And so the theory of knowledge, for example, it could be constructionism, objectivism, subjectivism, uh, intersects with the theoretical perspectives or the philosophical stance, for example, positive, uh, positivism, post-positivism, interpretivism. 
as well as the methodology or the strategy and overall design and plan behind the choice of the methods. And then, of course, the methods being the actual tools, for example, interviews, surveys, uh, Joanna Brigg Institute or JBI tools, uh, discourse analysis techniques, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I really do like uh, Thule's quote regarding methodology that sort of pulls all these uh, strands together. And that is, the methodology is seen as the research strategy that translates ontological and epistemological principles into guidelines that show how research is conducted. So, each of these sub-questions is supported by particular relationships among these facets, and my proposal is situated within a post-structuralist perspective, which supports knowledge production as partial, historically and culturally situated, and incomplete. I appreciate the notion of the borderland, and I think this picture illustrates the vagueness of it all. It also makes me think about if and when a defined border is a help or a hindrance to knowing and understanding. Since writing my second draft uh, of my proposal, I also extended my thinking further by reflecting on my argument for methodological plurality and seeing what was out there in the literature. I came across Denzin and Lincoln's discussion about the bricolage and then have also read Kitchell's work to attempt to understand whether this approach is what I am ultimately proposing. So I do see that from this diagram that is included in my proposal, that I see these two domains of inquiry not as separate, complete, or enclosed entities, but that they are interrelated to each other and have blurred or permeated borders. I also see this design as emergent, as the potential interrelationships among these domains will be revealed during the process of engaging with the work, as they all relate in some way to nurses, RNs and LPNs, and how they are educated to practice. I also feel the need to also mention my challenges in attempting to make sense of this landscape, as I pull together so much of what I have learned and experienced in my many as uh, what I call my WTF or what moments. Trying to maneuver around this proposed complexity has created moments of confusion, craziness, and an exercise in frustration to exist among competing ideas, and of course, the need to vent from time to time and also to clarify some further points, including such conceptualizations as triangulation, crystallization, as well as bricolage. As I continue to read further about the potential methodological plurality lens I might be arguing for, I realized that this created questions related to describing triangulation in addition to bricolage and crystallization. So in terms of triangulation, uh, a few authors suggest that triangulation is verification, validity, or corroboration. Um, and in this context, it would be using multiple methods or tools to explore a particular phenomenon, um, adding to more richness, robustness, a more well-developed understanding. Data analyzed uh, is analyzed using various methods for one phenomenon, and my proposal I see as utilizing differing data from differing sources, for example, published literature, interview, observational, textual data, to explore two interrelated phenomena. My understandings of crystallization so far from my reading suggest that it also is post-structuralist critical and social constructionist in orientation. Um, many authors talk about how you, you are using the same data set throughout, or parts of data sets throughout a crystallization process. And my project utilizes differing data sets, published literature, observation, interview data. 
And crystallization also um, assumes that knowledge is never complete, sometimes competing, um, and does allow for producing knowledge for different audiences uh, with a deepened understanding of a complex topic. And so I think that perhaps my perspective is still a little bit different from crystallization as well. Bricolage is an attention towards processes, relationships, and interconnections among phenomena. And this is a, a definition from Kinchelo. Bricolage focuses on complexity and is not concerned with verification of truth, but rather of understandings and action. It requires broader understandings of research to include philosophical inquiry, as researchers need an epistemological and ontological map to help one understand the nature of the territory they are exploring. So here, philosophy is seen inclusively along with research, and there's multidimensional connections between individuals and their contexts. No description is fixed. And a bricolage uh, orientation can help one move beyond dichotomies of qualitative, quantitative, art, science, holism, fragmentation. And so Kitchelow suggests that bricolage can transcend the boundary between empirical and philosophical inquiry. And he suggests that they are inseparable. And so building upon Kitchelow's idea of bricolage and philosophy as research, I see now my project as perhaps using various philosophical tools to clarify uh, a process of inquiry and or assumptions uh, in which there's an appreciation of categories that uh, we see, such as RN and LPN, as human constructions which impact perceptions and action. And so this post-structuralist social constructionist approach uh, can really help to explore the boundary between the social world and the narrative linguistic representation of it. And so for me, uh, viewing my, as I look back now to my same slide that I made a year ago, instead of undergirding this process with post-structuralist, I would now argue that I would undergird it with a social constructionist view of knowledge that's informed with post-structuralist perspectives for, for um, understanding of knowledge. And there are certain social constructionism assumptions, and that is there is a critical stance towards taken for granted knowledge and an understanding that the categories and concepts we use to understand the world are historically and culturally specific and that knowledge is sustained by social processes, and that knowledge results through our daily interactions with people in our social life. And knowledge and social action thus go together. And um, inherent in this is, of course, the use of language that helps to either sustain or change these social processes. And as well, there's power bound within these constructions. And for example, what's permissible for different people to do in their day-to-day -day work. And so since I've done this presentation a year ago for my proposal, I can see now the significance of a social constructionist approach that underpins the overall project. So I do see my project as, as having blurred boards or borders. Like I said earlier, I don't see my two sub-questions as being mutually exclusive. They're looking at phenomena with a slightly different lens, from a slightly different perspective, that will ultimately, I, I'm assuming, and I, I would think, will inform each other once they're all completed. And so there is some crossing of epistemological boundaries in terms of um, JBI's understanding, for example, of 
uh, knowledge versus an institutional ethnography. And so these two sub-questions will be addressed using two methodologies, each with their own assumptions about being and knowing. So this is a little exercise that I summed up my presentation with, and I asked each of my three committee members to reflect on this picture for a minute or two and ask them what they saw here to describe and interpret essentially what they see and tell a little story about the picture. So we went around the room and each of the three professors told me what they saw. And so for example, right now you could do the same thing as just look at this picture for a short period of time and just jot down how you may interpret this particular picture. And I, and I came to this little exercise, and it was informed by Hawthorne's 2012 uh, Vine technique, which is visual interpretation narrative exercise, and his principle of projective interpretation. And of course, what we recognize in the present is influenced by our past experience and perception. And so once we went around the room and we've got different people's perspectives on this picture, I then showed a different perspective, and that was this perspective. And this is, in fact, a picture, um, a micron, electron, micrograph picture of a football shirt. And so now having known what that picture is, what actually does that picture help us understand? For example, what are the limits to our knowing and the limits to our interpretation? What can we know and not know from this picture? For example, this is an extreme close-up picture of the fabric that helps illustrate the breathability of the fabric. However, does this tell us anything about how football is played or how big the football field might be? Or even if this is football or soccer that we are talking about. And so different lenses show us different partial understandings. So it is important to reflect on the appropriateness of the lenses used. And so in summary, that is sort of how I'm seeing my proposal in that both my JBI systematic review that I complete for my dissertation as well as the institutional ethnography lens that I'll be using for the analysis of the RN and LPN interviews. These are both utilizing different lenses and they will create partial knowledge, partial understandings, which together could deepen and extend our understanding about RN and LPN relationships and education coming from differing perspectives. And so that concludes my research proposal. And thank you for listening. Just a quick note about this last slide. This was more of a, a working slide to help me with my learning. Because as I was talking in my proposal about different perspectives about knowledge and philosophical assumptions and how they influence uh, methodological uh, approaches and methods, I drew up this slide to help my understanding to tease apart these perspectives with relationships to the JBI approach to doing a systematic review, as well as an institutional ethnography. So certainly I think these two approaches come with their own assumptions regarding knowledge. JBI comes from a more objectivist stance, um, informed through positivism and post-positivism, um, utilizing standardized, transparent, comprehensive processes to produce, quote-unquote, real best practice documents to inform practice, whereas an institutional ethnography comes from more of a social constructionist uh, understanding of knowledge, uh, knowledge as embodied social knowledge of work, um, and seeing social relations as connections of work processes. Um, and Dorothy Smith's work is definitely informed by feminist standpoint theory um, in terms of grounding work in women's or people's material activity. And the methodology involves uh, exploring people's everyday work experiences to reveal uh, the generalizing effects of 
textually mediated work processes and how one's work is socially organized. And so, again, this slide was just to help me and hopefully help you just see how you might pull apart these underpinnings for each methodology or research perspective that you may want to use. So I hope you find it helpful. Um, I certainly did to try to, to tease these out as part of my learning. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you found this um, proposal helpful and if you are a PhD student preparing your own, um, I hope this has, has helped you uh, see what type of work uh, can influence a proposal presentation. Thanks again for listening.